Hello everybody and welcome. In this section, we're gonna be talking about rigging. We're gonna be talking about animation and the concepts and the introduction to animation. Riddle, the head of animation at Access Studios, he's gonna explain everything. In this first video, we're gonna talk about rigging. Rigging is essentially a process where you place different joints on a body, or in this case, a ship to animate it. So like I was showing you in the previous and the layout section, when I was animating the flaps on the ship, I kind of did a sloppy job. So Friddle will actually show you how to do it properly uh, since you know he's a much better animator than I am. He will also be explaining the principles of animation. So squash and stretch, arcing, uh, easing in, easing, easing out, all of that is very important when you're doing animation to make a character you know, just come to life not just for animation, also for effects. The same principles apply when you're doing your visual effects as well. And then in the end, he's gonna also show you how he actually used that rig, how he used all the principles to animate the ship in Maya. He will share the whole process. So I think without any further ado, Fredo, take it away. Animation is the process of manipulating an object or character over multiple frames to make it appear like it is moving. In character animation, the old masters refer to the process as the illusion of life. The goal is to make your audience forget that they are looking at a drawing, or in this case, a CG model, and simply be able to buy into the character's performance. There is of course a lot that goes into this. A long time ago, a list of principles were summarized based on what animators found helped audiences to buy into this illusion of life. These were called the 12 principles of animation. Squash and stretch is probably the most important principle of all. It gives your object weight, that illusion of gravity that you're looking for. Number two is anticipation. It's that little small movement before a big movement, that little movement that kind of preempts what's about to happen. In this case, he ducks down to build up the energy and then he launches into the big jump. So this little downwards movement here would be the anticipation and then he goes into it. I think it would look pretty weird if he was just to go straight from sitting into a jumping position without having to anticipate it. Number three is staging. Good staging means that you're trying to get the point of a shot across as clear as possible. In this case, the point of the shot is for this little guy to notice us and then jump over to us. If I had another character in the background, I would try and keep him as still as possible because if that character was making any big movements, it would distract from the purpose of this shot, which is this guy. Good staging also starts leaning a lot more towards good camera work and composition, which is probably a lesson for another time. Number four is straight ahead animation and pose to pose animation. In straight ahead animation, I will start at the beginning and I will work my way through the entire shot, putting down all the keyframes and poses that I need. So by the time I get to the end frame, I've already pretty much animated the whole shot. In pose to pose animation, I will go through the entire shot and I will set down all the key poses. Once I'm happy with the timing and the speed of the shot, then I will go in and add all the in-betweens. Number five is follow through and overlapping action. When this little guy comes to a halt, different parts of his body are settling at different times. That's the follow through animation. The overlapping action would be if you have a look at his limbs. They're doing something slightly separate than the rest of his body. The bulk of his body is moving but his legs are kind of getting into position and arms are reaching out to anticipate the landings and the jumps. Number six is slow in and slow out. Well, that's pretty self-explanatory. If you think about any object starting to move, it starts slow, accelerates, and then slows down as it comes to a stop. Unless, of course, it's hitting a wall. In that case, it'll just stop dead. Number seven is arcs. In animation, things just look better when they move in arcs. It's pretty common to think you finished an animation and another animator tells you to check your arcs. That's just how gravity works. In this case, the cannonball hits the wall, goes up into the air, and as gravity starts taking over, it starts arcing back to the ground. Number eight is secondary action. Basically one object causing a secondary movement on another object. In this case, if you look at this character's ears and tail, They've got a little bit of a secondary movement as the body moves. See that? That's the secondary action. Again, we can see the secondary action here. 
If you have a look at his ears and his tail, they're basically reacting to the body doing a specific movement, and then they're doing the secondary movement. Number nine is timing. Timing is everything. It's gonna determine the size and the weight of your character. If you think for instance King Kong, how slow and heavy he moves. If he was to move too fast, it would break that illusion. It's gonna be the same with any object you animate. If you want the physics to be believable, you need to get the timing right. Number 10 is exaggeration. Have a look at how much I exaggerate this cannon when it fires. It really blows up here for the anticipation and then stretches out there in the front for the shoot. That's just a way to take a little boring animation and make it a little bit more exciting. There's also going to be a difference. If you're animating something more hyper-real or photoreal, you're not going to have this much exaggeration. But if it's going to be something cartoony, then there's no limit. Number 11 is solid drawing, or in 3D animation, probably better to refer to it as solid posing. You want to make sure that your poses are as solid as they can possibly be. Number 12 is appeal. Well, that's pretty simple. You want your animations to be appealing. You want the design of your characters to be appealing. You want the movement to be appealing. The more appeal it has, the more the viewer will enjoy it. 